Hi everyone, it's Steve. I have this light fixture here that has a small problem with it. It's not producing the nice balanced light that I'd like it to have. Let me show you what I mean. This light fixture, it's, you know, it's pretty nice. It has a low profile, um, works very well with my decor in the house, but it was originally designed to be used with these types of light bulbs, compact fluorescent. Uh, and so it takes one, just one light bulb. Um, when you install a light bulb, it'll sit somewhere in here just like that. Uh, and the light will basically shine all the way around and in this direction, that direction, this direction, and that direction as well. But uh, nowadays, I try not to use those compact fluorescents and I use typical LED bulbs. So if you're familiar with LED bulbs, you will have noticed that when they're inserted in a fixture, the light generally goes mainly away from it in this direction. And that's because there's a circuit board that sits uh, on this plane and there's all these little chips on it that shine light pretty much in this direction and in some cases outwards. Um, this diffuser helps out to some extent, but because the circuit board is mainly oriented in this direction, there is this area on the on the lamp that doesn't get much light. And you can imagine that being somewhere uh, from around here all the way to out over here. So if I take this away, this area here does get a bit of light, but it's not as intense as the rest of the fixture. So I wanna fix that. Um, and I could just go ahead and buy some fancy LED that, that shines lights in more directions and it's brighter, but there's no fun in that. I mean, I, I wanna take this thing apart and just get my hands dirty and work on something. So let's open this thing up and let's see what's inside uh, and what we'll need to do to, to modify it. Okay, I have the light fixture opened up and this is basically what's inside. It's a very straightforward situation. You have a single light socket with its live neutral and ground connectors and you also have various mounting holes so that you can affix the light fixture to your ceiling and various style of underlying junction box. Now what I want to do is I want to go from this situation where we have just one light bulb orienting light in that direction to now having two light bulbs where we have lights going in both directions. And this should provide a very balanced situation where light is evenly distributed across the fixture and we overcome the dark spots of the LED lights. But before I do that, I'm going to have to take care of a couple of issues. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a GU24 style connector in here. And these are very common for compact fluorescent bulbs because you want to limit the type of light bulb that goes into a lamp fixture specifically to prevent um, overheating and any risk of fire that could result from that. So this specific lamp fixture, you might be able to read down here. This is a caution risk of fire. Use only compact fluorescent lamps, 23 watts, 120 volts, 60 hertz. Uh, so you generally want to stay below 23 watts of power in this fixture. So by introducing this connector, you can only stick in compact fluorescent bulbs like this that uh, will meet the rating criteria of this lamp fixture. But this is an Edison style connector. So how am I gonna get this and that? Well, you can introduce one of these devices in here. And this is a defeater of the GU24 or an adapter, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it basically will stick into here and now you have an Edison connector. Now, in some states, I think that these are highly illegal because you can potentially now insert an Edison style light bulb that def overcomes the rating of this lamp fixture and potentially cause fire. So don't do this unless you've spoken to an electrician and have their sign off on it and everything is cool in the area that you live in and you're not breaking any laws or setting people's houses on fire when you modify lamps fixtures like this. My next issue is, well, I need a second socket for the second light bulb. Now I happen to find one of these in my garage. It's unfortunately a GU24 socket, but 
I have a couple of these things lying around, so I'll just make use of that. Um, when I take this, I'm going to have to mount it onto the uh, fixture, and there is no way to do that just from this directly, but I have some tiny scrap materials that I can leverage. This is one of these keys that you can use to remove a car stereo from the, the chassis in the car. And what I plan to do is to just cut it down to size and drill the appropriate holes, mount it on the back, and then, you know, stick this thing onto the fixture where it's needed. And that should provide a good fit. I will think I also need to do uh, one of these uh, custom brackets on the other socket as well, because this socket has a compression or an expansion style springy fitting, which just clicks in place. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing somewhere here that's not going to interfere with the light bulbs once they're installed. So I might have to relocate this somewhere else, maybe, maybe there, so that they're kind of evenly symmetric across this fixture, and then go from there. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go down to my garage, I'll start drilling some holes, and uh, we'll start putting this thing together. Okay, I'm in my garage now, ready to do some cutting. I have my bracket clamped against a piece of wood. It's in a pretty sturdy setup. I'll use my rotary tool to uh, trim it down to size along this marking I've made ahead of time. Now that the bracket's been cut, we can drill the holes. Similar setup as before, only this time I've marked where I want the holes and I'm going to use a nail to punch a small tiny divot or a depression inside this uh, metal so that it'll help guide my drill bit. I don't have a stepper bit this small, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smaller drill bit first to put a small pilot hole in there and then enlarge it later on to the final size uh, with the larger bit. All right, got two brackets. Holes are drilled, cut the size. Let's see if they fit. Here is the GU24 connector, and this is gonna align up to the back. And fortunately, there's a little groove where these slide into, and that is a pretty good fit. All right, let's check the other one. Uh, that's pretty close. I think that'll work out. That hole's large enough to fit the smaller screw that goes in there. Pretty good. And finally, I have this screw and nut combination which will go into here. And that fits in quite nicely. And let's check the other one. Perfect. This is good to go. Finally, I can drill the holes needed to mount the two light sockets into the light fixture. Again, I've marked where I want the holes. I'll use the same technique as last time with a hammer and nail to prepare a pilot hole and then use a different size drill bits to finally complete the hole. Okay, I'm back at my bench and I'm ready to start to put things back together again. One thing that's bothering me though is the presence of this grounding wire on this bulb fixture. And it's not that I want to remove it, is I'm wondering well, what good did it do to begin with? Because this whole fixture here has a paint coating over top of it and so nothing is conductive. And usually what you want to do is you want to attach a grounding wire to some bare metal just in case 
the fixture or the thing that you're enclosing becomes live. For instance, inside of a, of a light switch, you might see that there is a, a grounding terminal attached to one of the screws on the side of the light switch that you put inside your junction box. So what happens is if that light switch were to fail and anywhere inside of that light switch, if some live wire like this one here came into contact with the chassis, then all that electrical current will be shunted to ground right away. Uh, assuming, of course, you've, you've connected a grounding wire uh, to the junction box. But that doesn't exist here. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to put my meter to uh, continuity mode. And I'm just going to touch my leads to make sure things are working. And if I run this anywhere around the case, obviously the paint is preventing anything from being in contact. And um, I'm sorry, anything from being conductive. And so even in the little enclosure here where the clip went in, there's nothing. There's no... Oh, I just touched my leads together. But there's no continuity anywhere in here at all. And so that came from this clip here. Now this clip here, ironically, is also covered in a paint and not conductive at all. In fact, the only way I can get this to work and test continuity on this is looking for places in the creases where the paint might have been scratched off and sometimes I can get it, but now you hear that? Sometimes I can get the continuity to click, but most of the times I can't. Anyway, dubious grounding on this junction box. I'm oh, sorry, a dubious grounding on this light fixture, and I've made a small modification to improve this. Let's get the meter out of the way for a moment. On the reverse side where I put my two new mounting holes, I filed away some of the paint that's on uh, the junk, uh, sorry, the light fixture, so that when I put my screws in, they will make contact with the bare metal that's um, exposed. And then by chance, if this fixture were to become live, for whatever reason, let's just assume that some other paint was removed somewhere else, then because these two screws, whoops, will come in contact with my new bracket. The bracket will be in contact with the grounding wire and it will do what it's supposed to do. So that's a much better improvement. That did mean I have to find some grounding wire and crimp a terminal on it to attach it, but that isn't too hard to do. And if you don't have one of these, um, I don't know what they're called, but these are uh, specific terminals that you crimp together uh, with a, a hole on the end, the screw can go through it. Um, you can just take the wire and wrap it around the screw like this before you secure it to the actual um, fixture itself. Uh, if you're not comfortable with doing this, of course, always consult an electrician and make sure you get their sign off before you do any work on your own. Okay, that said, I'm going to start to put things back together again. Everything's back together now, and before I put this on the ceiling and test it out, I want to make sure I haven't created any new problems. Uh, and by problems, I mean short circuits or things that could create risk of fire. So what I'll do is I'll use my meter, put it back in continuity mode, and make sure that there are no shorts between live and neutral on any of these pairs of wires. So let's start with these two here. Nothing. That's pretty good. And then these two over here. Let's go live, live. I didn't physically connect any of these things together, but I just want to make sure that there isn't any invisible problem that could 
be introduced by my modifications. These are fine. And let's get this in the way over here. Let's go between these two. This one and that one. And that's fine. And then finally the grounding. So if this ground wire is now should be connected to the other ground wire by virtue of the light fixture itself. So let's go with the nut to nut. And that's good. And then ground wire to ground wire over here. And that's good. Perfect. So that looks pretty safe to me. Finally, the last thing I did was to kind of pull back on these light bulbs a bit so that the bracket is bent and that the light bulbs are not actually touching the chassis. And that just helps with making sure there aren't any hot spots due to heating of the light bulb in one particular area. Let's get these out of the way and let's make sure that the diffuser actually fits. If this doesn't fit, I'm going to have to drill some new holes, but that doesn't appear to be necessary. Everything seems to be fine. So this is good to go. I'm going to go and install it back on the ceiling, turn the power back on, and let's see if these light bulbs light up. Okay, for reasons due to poor auto exposure controls on my camera, I only have the following photos that show the completion of this project. The obvious improvement is that there is much more light in the area now that a second light bulb is in use, and this by far outweighs any of the dim spots that you can see in the photos. The dim areas occur due to how LED light bulbs orient light, and you can even see why that happens from some of these photos. In practice though, these aren't a concern as they can only be seen from certain viewing angles in the area that the lamp is installed. So that about wraps things up. I thank you for watching and I hope you found this video informative. Please consider subscribing and providing feedback as that will help me gauge interest for future projects and videos.